Greetings all you Metamaniacs, this is Team NEG, and today I'm going to go over some tips and tricks that I've learned from the last six rounds of Brand Arena. The first thing I'm going to go over, surprise, surprise, is mods. Now, everyone knows our channel is super big on mods, farming mods, and, you know, being really finicky when it comes to modding each and every character. Something that happens if you don't pay enough attention to your mods is that you can have speed gaps. I experienced this in a very real way this last Grand Arena well, when for some reason I did not have a mod on both my Snow Trooper and my Death Trooper. So both of them were missing mods. There was speed on those mods, a considerable amount of speed on my Death Trooper mod. So it brought my Stark speed down from a blazing 315 to about 295. So he could not take down the Night Sister teams that I wanted them to. And when they did, Snow just wasn't hitting hard enough for me to actually uh, make, you know, do the damage that I was used to on that team. So, you know, that is an example of me being dumb, but it's also an example of the importance of clocking your teams correctly. You can have the fastest Stark in the galaxy, but if the characters that are running behind him don't have enough speed to catch up with him after he puts those two buffs up and he get, and everybody gets the, that 20% speed bonus, then you're SOL. Your Stark might be 325 speed, but your next character might actually make that team you know 280 speed if they're too slow there can also be gaps between the characters too you could have the next character is going right away you could have the next character is going too fast so they're right on top of each other so you never really have control over what characters go next in your lineup so that's a very important part of modding is clocking your teams correctly a uh, little pitch to our patron community this month we're doing a workshop on how to clock teams correctly if you're watching this after September 2019 then uh, you can watch that patron video not live just by becoming a patron and all of the past workshops are in our patron library and uh, you can get access there. The next point that I want to make is to really understand how flexible teams need to be and to understand what everything can beat. So for instance, I have this uh, Imperial Troopers team that is totally mangled. I can't use them against these gear, gear 13 Night Sisters that are coming up. My Stark can beat them, but you know the characters that are coming behind, there's going to be a big speed gap. So they're not going to be able to overcome the team on the other side. So what am I going to do with this uh, Imperial Troopers team? Well, there's Bounty Hunters and Nest. And if you uh, see Bounty Hunters Nest and, and uh, Night Sisters Nest, and you have an easy TW for your guild, you might want to take just one team and use that as kind of a sacrificial team where people can go in and use their Imperial Troopers to practice taking Nest down on those teams. It is a very possible, it's actually quite easy once you kind of get the hang of it and get the rhythm of it uh, and have the right mods. So. Luckily, my Death Trooper wasn't missing his potency cross, so he was very high potency still. My The nest that I was fighting was quite low potency, so I could go up against her really confidently, and I was able to just take that team down like nobody's business. So, you know, sometimes you might face a Night Sister team that your Imperial Troopers can't take down. Sometimes you might face no Night Sister team at all, which I've faced before, because why put a Night Sister team on that my Imperial Troopers are gonna walk over? So you gotta find something else that those teams that uh, are staples for you uh, can beat. Don't kind of, you know, have one counter against one thing because it's too easy for someone to back you into a corner. Okay, this is probably my favorite thing that I've learned slash remembered or just had really underlined this month in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. When something cannot be beat by a whole host of teams, then that means that that something can turn around and beat a whole host of teams. And the example of this is the Geonosian bugs. As everyone knows, they are a pain in the ass to get down. CLS, CLS can get them down, but you really have to know what you're doing. Grievous can, of course, get them down. The Meta can. And then Treya is very, very easy against this team. You don't even need Darth Nihilus and Scion on it. Uh, it just kind of melts in front of you as long as you have enough tanky characters behind it. But, you know, bugs, you know, bugs are really, really hefty and they, they withstand a lot, 
on defense. So just turn that around and they beat everything. And I've had a ton of fun beating a whole host of things with bugs this past month in my territory wars and my grand arena. They are always on offense for me now. I kind of put my night sisters in my nest up front, say, you know, kind of fooling people into thinking that my bugs are in the back. They're not. Where are they? They're not on the board. I'm using them to get, you know, around 56 points with my with my Geonosians on, on offense. So that's been really fun. And just keep that in mind whenever a counter is like, Something is really difficult to take down right now. Clones, you know, Rex led clones. Well, you know, if you cannot take down Rex led clones with bugs, we'll turn that around and Rex lead clones will take down your bugs. Now, it's not always true. For instance, bugs and Padme. Bugs can't take down Padme and Padme is not really good at taking down bugs, but the, you know, so they're gonna time out. So those are just teams that really just don't work against each other. There's not a lot like that in the game. Usually it's like, two soft counters against each other that you can overcome when you are behind the driver's seat or just hard counters that will will wipe off your board. So that was a really good lesson with the Gene Oceans. I'm having tons of fun with them on offense and I suggest that people learn how to use them on offense, which is stupid easy. <laughs> you're just gonna like point and shoot and it doesn't really matter even who the characters are that you're, they're just really, really easy to use. Related to this is to really understand the exceptions to the rules when it comes to certain characters. Now, with bugs, I learned this and I would be very, very high on the leaderboard right now if I had not made this mistake and it was to take bugs against Kira Nast. Now, bugs just have no trouble against Nest as long as they're not under Kira. It's super fun. You just come in and you kill her with Spy. Maybe it'll take a couple of shots, but she's not regaining protection, right? She she, she stacks protection when she's being hit, but she doesn't gain it back except under a Kira lead. So with Kira, it just, you know, and this has happened to a couple other people in my guild, you just ha can't time it right. Even if the nest isn't super, super tanky, it can be very difficult to take her down. So you need to know the exceptions to the rules and the nuances in the game, and, you know, also to learn from your mistakes when it comes to, uh, to Grand Arena. So that was a mistake I made. It cost me those 30 points. Points, it cost me the battle and uh, and it means that I'm not gonna be at the top of the leaderboard which is heartbreaking because this Grand Arena is going really well but I'll know that and now you know that so you're not gonna make that same mistake again. Along a similar theme is gear and how it relates to your team when you're looking at whether your team can take on a team that's on defense. An example of this is again, Imperial Troopers. My rule of thumb is that you can have no more than uh, two, a difference of two in gear between your your Imperial Troopers and the Knight Sisters. So for instance, if there are three Knight Sisters with gear 13, you have to have one character, that's gonna be Stark, with gear 13 on your Imperial Troopers. And even then it gets a little tricky because gear 13 night sisters if they're modded very well are very powerful so you might want to uh, you know kind of close that gap a little bit i have the stark zeta which makes it a lot a lot easier to beat night sister teams but um it's you still need to really consider the 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 gear in uh, when you're assessing whether or not you want to take a team on there are, of course, some lovely exceptions to this rule. Uh, Kira is the one that comes to mind right away. Kira and Hermit Yoda, actually, who go together with Nest on an undersized squad team. Both of those characters can be lower gear. Kira can be, you know, gear six or seven. Doesn't really matter as long as she has her, her leader with the protection regeneration on it. And then Hermit Yoda really is just there for that first initial buff on Nest. And then he's gonna die anyway. So no matter if he's gear 13 or gear uh, 10 it doesn't matter he's he's gonna die his job is to put the buff on and so you can you know you can adjust your gear accordingly then the very final piece is to, you know, take this time between Grand Arenas and, and, and leading up to the next one to assess where you're vulnerable as a player. For me, it's Jedi Knight Revan. I put on, often, I put on both of my Revans and my General Grievous, which doesn't leave me a lot if someone wants to do the same to me. So I kind of really looked hard at my roster and looked what teams I could easily develop to fill that particular hole. Uh, you know, for me, that's going to be clones. I'm going to develop a clones team. I'm going to get them up to, you know, a gear level that I feel really confident about taking them against Jedi Knight Revan. And then guess what? They can take down pretty much everything else 
in the game. Padme is a little bit iffy. It's going to be a dirty fight. Same with General Grievous, but they're a very, very powerful squad. Clones are going to be cornerstone to my roster and they're going to fill in that gap. So folks, be careful when you're facing me because uh, I know have uh, backup plans behind backup plans. So that's it for today. I just wanted to pass along some of those tips that I learned from my own mistakes. There's my doorbell. <laughs> and hoping that you don't have to make the same ones that I have in Grand Arena. There you go. Good luck on the hollow tables and may the force be with you. Thank you.